Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm out here working on the Spitfire a little bit more. Finally, finally making some headway on it. So I'm going to show you real quick what I'm doing. Uh, before, when I cranked it up, uh, it was uh, blowing you know, a decent bit of smoke out the back and stuff. So I suspected that the other carburetor that was on it might be causing some of the issue. So this is the carburetor that originally came off of uh, the 78's original engine. So I put that on, got a nice little air cleaner, and also, step around here without killing myself, I got the factory fuel pump on it. It's a brand new fuel pump. Um, got it in probably about a couple months ago. Finally had a chance to get here and get it on. Um, before that, you know, they had this little electric pump down here hooked up. So I put I put it on, sitting there trying to crank it, trying to crank it, trying to crank it, and it's just not it's not starting. It's not doing nothing. So I unhook the fuel line from the main gas line, and you know, with one arm reaching in, cranking the key over while I'm checking the hose for pressure and or for suction it's getting none the pump is not sucking like it's supposed to so i hook up the electric fuel pump again fired up it runs so i take the fuel pump off and you know i got my other engine over here i was trying to see you know the placement of you know the cam lobe for the fuel pump where it hooks in and you know here's the old one which coincidentally is still good you know amazingly but for for whatever reason you know when when you put these in i know, I know it's really hard to see the lighting in here is absolutely absolutely sucks but you know you want to you know you want to get these studs lined up and push in and then this arm here is going to push up against the side of the camshaft now, when you get it slid in correctly, you know, the bottom end will mate up to the block. And this is a, and, you know, let me clarify this really quick. There are two different types of fuel pumps for these Spitfires. This is a straight arm pump, because you see how straight this arm is. There's another one where the arm actually curves, curves up, kind, you know, kind of, you know, kind of like that a little bit. You know, it, it's not exact, but I'm just, you know, using my finger as an illustration. But the arm actually kind of curves a little bit. And those pumps require a spacer. Those were used on the late 1500s. Um, I, I'm not sure from, you know, what engine number on. But, you know, uh, right around about 1979, 1979s used a spacer. But, you know, you know, the straight arm pumps were from 1978 and before. And they do not require a spacer. So this is a straight arm pump. So you see, no spacer. So you know you get get everything lined up and push it in, and you see where it mates up to the block on the bottom. Well, if you look at the uh, if you uh, if you look at the top there, you see it's not quite fully set in, and you can push it in and out. You'll feel a little resistance pushing it back out a little, and that's what you want to feel. And I, would, I did not get that on the first round when I put this on. It just went slid in, plunk, or up to the block. You know, no, no spring feel pushing back on it or nothing. So I, I'm thinking I may have missed, I must have missed the cam blow. But I put it back on. I felt that spring feel. I was like, okay, there it is. Locked it in, put my fuel hoses back on and all that. And you know, I got the battery hooked up. So let me take my keys out here. We are going to. Oh, well, that helps if I actually get it in the keyhole. There it goes! <laughs> the fuel pump works! It's pumping fuel out. Obviously, the car is running. Now, see out there. I don't know how 
how well you can see that in the video. I'm using my phone to record this. It is pu still puffing a little bit of smoke, but it's not as bad as it was. I mean, before I, I puffed out a pretty serious cloud. And all, so it may still be a carburetor issue, but it, it may be a valve seat, um, ah, valve guide seal. You know, uh, and though to, in order to change those, I would have to, pretty much have to take the head off. You gotta take the rocker assembly off, take the spring and the keepers out that hold the valve into the head, remove those, and then there's um, there should be like a little rubber seal that slides over the valve stem and then seats over the, the area where the valve stem comes through. So, and, you know, of course, you know, you don't want to take a chance of dropping a valve down into your cylinder. So, yeah, you pretty much, you pretty much got to take the, the head off in order to change those. But this is just a temporary engine that's in here. I just need to get running. I still got to do the slave cylinder. The clutch is still locked up. But, yeah, I'm happy. Um, I've been out here about almost two hours now. Finally got her to fire up with the factory fuel pump. So I am extremely happy. And it ain't running half bad. The timing is probably not set dead on, although it's it's pretty damn close. I just, I set it by ear. You know, just twisting it this way and that way a little bit and fire it up and you know, adjust it and to where it sounded right, you know, lock it down, turn it off, fire it up, turn it off, fire it up, you know, and it, it seems to be catching, like as soon as I hit that key, it catches and fires. So if it's not dead on, it's it's damn close. So, but yeah, all in all, it's, it's not run bad, the gas, it may run a little, you know, you can hear the, the bonnet rattling a little bit. The gas that's in this car is like two years old. Really, the gas really isn't that good anymore. So, you know, I, I really need to get, get it down to the gas station, fill it up with some premium, maybe put some, uh, maybe a gas additive in to help clear out, you know, clean out the lines a little bit. You know, like uh, some, uh, you know, Lucas makes a great, a great gas additive. But yeah, uh, that's it. I, overall, I'm, I'm very, very happy that you know, I progressed to the point where, yeah, she's running. So, we'll go ahead and we we'll go ahead and shut her down. So yeah, I still gotta get in here and check the wiring. I still don't have running lights in here. And you can see, I got the <laughs> top up, and I got birds that nest in this. Oh, damn. And it's, uh, these damn rods, if you bump them, they go to rattling like hell. But yeah, I got birds that are nesting over in there and whatnot. And, you know, I mean, I'll show you the front of the bonnet. You know. uh, I mean, aside from that, you know, the car needs a bath anyway. You know, I ain't mad at the birds, but, you know, they... It crapped all over the all over my bonnet and stuff, so I was like, "Yeah, I don't need them getting in there and start to tear, you know, what's left of the interior apart and you know, crap on the seats and all that." So I went ahead and put the top up. Top is shrunk. It doesn't want to snap snap in in the areas where it should and all. So I need a new top, but it, it, at the very least, it keeps the birds out. So, but yeah, this engine is just temporary anyway. So I may have to do some head work. It's got great compression. You know, it's a good running little engine. But uh, even the previous owner did tell me, you know, because this is the engine that came out of the 77. You know, the previous owner told me that uh, the number one plug did foul out every once in a while. You just took it, had to take it out and clean it up. You know, so I'm going to go ahead and unhook the battery because it's going to be sitting here for about another week. Or I can get back to do anything else to it. There we go. So, but yeah, um, he did tell me the number one plug did fall out and stuff. You had to take it out and clean it out, and it'd be good for a while. So it, it, it tells me, yeah, there's there's some oil getting into the number one cylinder somehow. 
So my main my main suspect is valve guide seal because I got between I think it's like 140 to 150 pounds of compression each cylinder on a compression test. So you know the the valves seem to be seating really good. The the piston rings seem to be compressed, you know, keeping compression real good. So I don't think there's anything in that area that's wrong. I think it's just I think it's just something that's you know one of those simple, stupid, cheap little parts like a valve guide seal that's just a royal pain in the rear end to change out because you got to take apart so much crap just to get to them. So, but I'm thinking that's probably what's going on. It's probably a valve guide seal leaking some oil down in there. So, but yeah, like I said, this is just temporary just so I can move this thing around, get it out of the way so I can get my 79. I still got wheels in the back and it's on a rolling you know, flat cart on the front, so I can freewheel this 79 body wherever I want to put it. So I can get to that engine back there and get the crankshaft out of that engine, which is the original engine for the 79. Should still have a really good crank in it to put into the original 78. And yeah, I'm gonna have to go over this and clean this up. It's not pitting or nothing yet, but yeah, you, <laughs> this is not good. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go over this and get this off. Uh, maybe some uh, some emery cloth or something of that nature. Just clean these surfaces up really good you know, before I put it back together. Uh, bearings I've coated in uh, gear lube and stuff, and it looks like they're holding up pretty good. But yeah, I need to get that uh, get that crank down in here with these new standard bearings. Plastic gauge it, make sure everything comes out right. If it does, then do the final torque on it, put this engine back together, and get it back in my, get it back in the 78. Yeah, because uh, that engine didn't smoke or nothing at all. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what, what I'm what I'm doing with it right now. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to get this on the road as, as soon as I can. You know, I got my my pickup truck is up for sale, so hopefully by the time it sells, I'll have this done and I'll be able to. You know, go ahead and put the plates on this again and actually get some use out of it. And uh, I'm, I'm undecided what I'm doing <laughs> with all this. <laughs> uh, I think I've had about enough of, you know, extensive projects for a while. And th this one here is the easy one. <laughs> That's pretty much what I got going on, you know, with the, as far as the Spitfire is going, I know I haven't really posted anything on the Spitfire lately and all. And, uh, you know, just... Haven't had time to work on it really, uh, and all that. But yeah, that's yeah, that that's what's going on with them so far. So hopefully, I get the slave cylinder in this car done, uh, get that truck sold, get the plates on this, get it down to a car wash, last 25 years of dirt and dust and crap off of it, and it might actually shine a little bit again. So as I make progress, I'll you know do some more some more videos, and like I said, hopefully pretty soon. There'll be a video of me with my uh, my action camera, you know, propped up in here somewhere, cruising this thing down the road. So, yeah, that's all I got for now, guys. So, yeah, as always, I appreciate everyone taking the time to watch my videos. Until the next video, keep them on the road.